Baker. I'm Krista Toller. I'm the studio market manager for Mako. Um, this is Lindsay Marr with Lindsay Marr Studio. She is doing um, events for us. She's done them before, and now we're calling it design style with Lindsay Marr. And we do a series of classes with her. This one is all about mushrooms. And so she's got this really fun idea to take an existing piece and kind of turn it into something different. So she can share all that with you. Um, I will be, um, if you, Lizzie's going to just take control in a minute and I will kind of go away and we'll show her hands too. We have an overhead camera on her hands. Um, we'll do some trivia in a little bit and just some fun stuff. So we have a lot of fun things to do. If you have questions, you can put them down in the chat. Um, I, if Lindsay doesn't see them, I will ask them, so, you know, when she gets a break or whatever. And then we have lots of fun things to show you. So anyway, Lindsay, take it away. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Krista. Thank you everyone for signing up. I'm happy you're here uh, virtually with us. Uh, so typically when I do these uh, live event or these recorded events, virtual events, uh, I film them from Calgary, Alberta, where I live. I'm not in Calgary right now. I'm currently in uh, Kelowna, BC for the summer. So um, there's a little bit of noise in the background. I apologize. That's neighbors doing some work on the yard. So I, I hope it's not too distracting, but they also should be done soon. Um, but anyways, we're here today because we're painting mushrooms and I'm super excited about this because I have to be fully transparent. I, I, I'm not a mushroom person, <laughs> uh, eating wise, not my thing. Um, I am a vegetarian too. And that always takes people by surprise because mushrooms are always like the substitute or option for vegetarians. So I just really like the idea of the shape of a mushroom. That's kind of what I was taking into consideration when, uh, we, we were brainstorming this online workshop. So I really am a big fan of looking at one thing and seeing how it can be transformed into something else. So whether you are a paint your own pottery studio owner or you're an independent painter and you just like to paint pieces at home, uh, I've just got a couple ideas that I want to share with you that you can definitely take as your own to paint samples or paint pieces to sell. Um, I had so much fun planning this one because uh, I, I come up with too many ideas at first and it's really nice to be able to put them by Krista and we kind of filter through the ideas that we think will work best. So the piece that we're working on today, this is the footed mushroom container, can't container. I get container and canister mix up all the time. So if I do that, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but this is a beautiful mushroom um, container from Mako. It's got three cute little feet on the bottom. It is definitely multifunctional. You could use that for a planter. You could use it for, oh my gosh, you could use it in your kitchen if you wanted to. You could have kitchen utensils in there. You could have paintbrushes in there. Whatever floats your boat to use that for, it can handle it. Um, so this is the unpainted piece, obviously, that we're going to be working on today. But the finished sample that we're going to be working on is this little cutie here. Uh, so you might be able to tell that if you are a fan of uh, animated movies, I'm calling this my scary or bad dream before a winter holiday <laughs> piece, uh, you know, just so it's generic. Um, but we're going to work with some beautiful jungle gems that I've got inside here. That one is called Oriental Caramel. Uh, on the outside, we've got some foundations in a matte black, and then we've got some stroke and coat on the outside, which adds some nice textures and uh, different glazes that we're going to use. So I'm curious before we get started, um, if anyone's painting along or just whenever you do paint, what do you do first? Do you do the inside first? Do you do the outside first? And if you do the outside first, would you paint the detailed things first or would you paint the background first? I'm just always curious to see like what is people's process for when they're painting something? Cause I, I think I did the piece first. I think I did the background first and then I went and painted the characters but I'm just curious how other people would do it. <laughs> Yeah, so if you all have an answer, you can put it in the chat and we can, it'll pop up so we can all see. Yeah. That's a good question because I think I would do the black first because then I could get any off of the mushrooms and then paint them. Mm -hmm. June yeah. says she does the inside first and the details last. Yeah, I think, 
I think that's fair. I think to me, mm-hmm. when I work on pieces, like I'm so excited to do the detail thing. So I want to mm-hmm. leave like the best for last, right? So I leave, um, I leave the details till the end and I kind of get the plain pieces out of the way. Um, the reason I asked that though, is I was curious because when I did this, I painted the background and then I painted these and I just noticed, you know, some of them went over the edge a little bit. So uh, one of the things that I thought of, if you are a person that does um, the details first, you could definitely use some of Mako's wax resist along the edge of these mushrooms so that when you do paint that background color on, you're not going to, you know, paint over any of that hard work that you've already done. So um, that's where I was curious. I was just thinking about that last night. Just thinking about, you know, I remember how I did it, but I'm curious about how others did it. And so that got my brain thinking. So let's start with the outside then. Uh, let's start with the inside um, and kind of take turns swapping the inside, which is the jungle gem color, and then the outside, which is the foundation color. So for both of those, I'm going to be using just um, soft fan brushes. Those are the best for applying color quickly and um, efficiently, I find. Uh, so the first color that I'm going to be using for the inside of this container is the Jungle Gems, Jungle Gems Crystal Glaze, which is uh, Oriental Caramel, which is S2708. So that's going to be uh, the color. Oh, sorry, I'm just getting a notification on my phone. It's all good. Um, so this is the color that we're going to be painting inside of the container here. So uh, we can do two to three coats of that, um, even coats, which applies really well with these fan brushes. Um, so it says obviously on the instructions on the bottle what to do if you haven't used the, these before. Um, so just give it a good shake before you use them. If you're using them independently, like I do like right now, you know, I'm I'm going to be painting straight out of this bottle with one brush. So I don't have any issues about dealing with like cross contamination of another glaze getting interfered with it. If you are a paint your own pottery studio, um, you might run into that issue if you have more than one person using the jar. So I just recommend if you have like a glaze dish or something that you can pour the paint into, um, you could use tin foil as well. When you're done, you just toss it out. You don't have to worry about cleaning anything up. Um, but what I like to do, I just pour the paint in the lid itself. Um, and then there's no confusion about what color it is. If I need to, I can just see on the bottom, I've got, uh, the name written on there, uh, but I just pour it into that. You can even just paint it straight out of the bottle if you'd like. So for the inside, just because I don't have to worry about, you know, going around any fine details on this, I'm going to be using a larger fan brush just so that it goes a little bit faster. And I thought this glaze jungle gem color was a really good Halloween color. Uh, it's nice and orange. It's a really pretty color once it's fired, but the gems that are inside of it are black and green, which I thought was pretty appropriate for um, seasonal like fall themed, Halloween themed projects. So this is a really good one to use. And then I also pick colors for the outside of the project that uh, in the stroke and coats that are the same color just to complement it as well. So um, the one thing to pay attention to that I noticed because um, I unfortunately had that happen to me <laughs> in the bottom where the feet are on the container. There's little dents inside and you can see perhaps on that one there. I just had a little bit of crawling because I had a little bit too much paint um, settled in there. So just when you have your fan brush, just do like a quick um, kind of like ring around like that on the inside, just so that you don't have too much paint pooling there that would cause um, any crawling issues. So that would be a good thing if you are teaching this project to other painters, uh, just to let them know to be careful of that. So my little, maybe not so secret trick is when I'm doing the edges, I let the brush do the work for me and I just pull straight up along the edge of that bisque and you get a really nice, pretty straight edge all the way around. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna pull my camera a little bit higher. There we go. Uh, so I just let the brush help me and the edge of the bisque help me just to get that edge of the bisque between the inside and the outside, a nice 
uh, straight line across the top, but I am also going to be using the black foundations along the top. So if I do go over it slightly, I can paint over it with the, the matte black as well, black velvet. Is anyone painting along today or is everyone watching and then going to try this later? Yeah, if you're painting, you can pop it in the chat or if you're just going to do it later. Either way is fine because you can pause it as you're watching it later. Totally. Yeah. I do think it's cool to watch somebody paint it because that little tip, the way you were talking about gluing your brush is really nice. I never thought about that. I just slap it on and make it messy and then have to clean it up. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't, it doesn't make too much of a mess of it. And this brush makes it pretty quick too, because it's so wide, you can get like bigger chunks painted at a time along the edge. So already I'm done the first coat pretty much. So while that dries, I'm going to switch up the paint that I'm using and work on the outside. So I'm just gonna move this brush away for a second. So the next color that I'm going to be working with for the outside, sorry about that. Uh, this is a wonderful Mako Matte Foundation Glaze. Um, this is called Black Velvet. It's uh, FN304. Uh, I really like the application and how these apply with a brush on disc pieces. Um, so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use a smaller fan brush this time, um, just so that I can kind of maneuver around those mushrooms a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to get the whole thing. So I'm going to paint the bottom, I'm going to paint the feet, and then all around the mushrooms on here. Um, I think what's great about this too is if you are a paint your own pottery studio and you have customers painting this for a workshop, uh, if you if they if your customers are getting enough paint on there, then you won't have to clear glaze this and you can just pop it like right in the kiln after the event. Um, and you don't have to wait for drying or glazing, clear glazing. So I think this is just a really great option to have for workshops, if that's what you offer, um, so that people can get them back sooner and you can fire them sooner. So I'm just going to use this smaller fan brush and I'm just gonna work my way around those mushrooms. Um, I find too, it's better to work with a bigger brush around this so that you don't get tiny little brush strokes showing through after you've fired it in case you don't get an even coating. Just a wider brush surface is going to cover more area, so you're likely to have a more solid finish uh, or solid result once it comes out of the kiln. So you could definitely use a smaller brush, but this just also helps uh, make things a little bit quicker because there is a lot of painting that's going on that we're doing today. Uh, we've got two or two to three coats on the inside of the container with the jungle gems. We've got three coats of this uh, matte black foundation on the outside. And then we've got all those little mushroom characters to paint too. So um, there is quite a bit of painting with this. So it just kind of helps move things along. Um, again, if you're a paint your own pottery studio uh, and you have customers coming in to paint this, this is just like a quick way to ensure that they're on time for the workshop and that you can go home at a decent hour. This would be a good project for, you know, like a, a paint a paint night, you know, when people come in and learn learn how to do it, but also have a little social interaction. I think you know, so can, too. Can, yeah. And I like the idea that, uh, well, we'll get to it once we get to like the little uh, characters that we've got on the mushrooms, but I print, I've got a template available that um, you can keep. So you can use it as reference when you're painting faces on, like if you're just not sure what kind of expression to pick, um, that's something that you can have available uh, for people to choose from. So that, that way you're teaching the same project to everyone, but everyone is gonna be doing it slightly different. So I like the idea of that too because then they can pick their own colors and stuff. And I think these little care, these little mushrooms on the side of the container, the container are really what um, spoke to me when I was picking this project, because I really liked the possible, all the possibilities that uh, they had that you could do with them. Um, so for me, I just thought of these as cute little characters that you could paint uh, likeness to um, on. And I mean, there are many characters out there from movies or shows or, what have you, that, uh, you know, one creative person is going to walk into your studio and just have so much fun painting them. 
Yeah, it'd be fun. Like if you're making a sample to have different characters, like I could see one being even a gnome, like that little small one that's right on the screen now. And then you could extend his hat up with some French dimensions or something like that, you know, just to make it really different. Or you could do an elf or, you know, or go traditional with the regular old mushrooms. But I just think I love your idea of switching it up. That, yeah, I think that's something that, um, <clears throat> you know, if if you order pieces, whether you are an independent painter or you are a paint your own pottery studio, um, I think it's so easy to order pieces that, you know, you think is a great idea and you think they're going to be hot items and then maybe they aren't so much, but then you're, you're left with them on your shelf. So you're trying to think of another way to repurpose them almost and see what else you could make them into. So I think that's a really uh, cool way to be able to do that. So I really like that because, well, obviously you don't want bisque to go to waste. I mean, it doesn't go bad, which is good. Um, there's no shelf life, but you just want to make sure that, you know, you, you're presenting different ways for yourself or your audience, your customers to paint it um, so that they're happy with it too. So that's what's really fun. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but the Barbie movie, I mean, you could paint little cute Barbie mushrooms with a whole lot of pinks. <laughs> How cute would that be? And then use like the jungle gems on the mushroom tops, the little, the, oh, I can't, I think of the color name for you. Hang on. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Let I'm thinking like pink pixie. Yeah, oh, pink pixie would be good, but there's a couple too. But that's what I like too, right? Like if you aren't drawing like, or you're not, if you're not painting like actual characters on it, like certain color palettes are definitely going to tell the story of what they represent. And I think that would be a really cute way to do it. Yeah. I think peppermint twist would be cute too. That mm. pixie. And then just so many fun colors you could mix in there. Yes. That idea. If anyone hasn't, I mean, Mako's website is fantastic with all of their painted pieces that they, well, two things. They've got, ooh, oh boy, I just did a big blob there. So we'll fix that up after. Um, but they've got wonderful color combination options for you to choose from if you're not sure about what glazes work well together so that you don't have to do the experimenting. I mean, I think I say this every time, but Mako does so much work for uh, their customers so that they can get the best results with their glazes without wasting time and inventory and all that. And so it's really, really helpful. And I love that about your website. Thanks. Our team worked hard on that for sure. It is, uh, it is really helpful. Like every product line, like with foundations, we're using the foundations matte today, but y'all are probably familiar with the regular foundations opaque, which is just a nice opaque coverage, nice glossy. And of course, we have this matte and then we have foundation shears, which can be used on top of a design and you can still see the design through it. So all the information on those is on the website under the foundations category. And within that, there are FAQs, you know, best ways to use it, you know, lots of tips. And then if you go into the project library, you'll just see tons of, you know, inspiration information. Yeah, which is awesome that you, you've done that for everyone. I really like using the sheer foundations. If anyone ever does um, imprints in their studio, whether it's kids or animals, paw prints, um, I really like the foundations for that or, and, or textured pieces. Um, you know, like make a Christmas trees or anything like that. I love the sheer glazes because you can still see the textures through it. Um, and you get that variation of light and dark versus from the glaze where it pools and settles and you get those highlights and shadows. And I just, I love the, I love the sheer glazes. Yeah, they are fun. They're different. You know, they're very unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the good color selection too. And they mix well. So if you wanted to kind of make your own colors, you can do that too. Yeah, that's true. But if you put, you can't mix them with the matte because gloss always wins. No, always no, no, no. Gloss always wins. So it does help. Um, you know, we were talking about if you paint the inside first, like my inside's already dried a little bit. I always find the first coat of paint on bisque dries the quickest just because it's such a bare, porous surface. Um, so that first coat will dry the quickest. So I just find it easier to put my hand inside too and, and help to hold it. So I'm just not going to glaze the very, very bottom of the um, 
the legs on this pot, this container right now, just because I don't want to brush it off when I'm moving it around. So I would just say when you're almost done, um, you could flip it over and just get those, the bottom of the feet painted just so that you're not, uh, you know, sliding that paint off by pushing it around on the tabletop. So that's my only point I will say about that is I'm just not going to do those quite yet. I'll leave those till the end. I mean, I'm doing this all black just because that's easier, but you could do like the same kind of design on the legs, like the base of these mushrooms. Like if you wanted to have little black and white stripes on those, that would be really cute too. Um, so just so many options of what you could do with that for sure. I like that idea. Okay. So now I'm, I think I'm just about done. Oh, I got one little mushroom to go around here. While you're doing that one, we can do, we have trivia and we do fun little giveaways. So, so relaxing. you have to put your relaxing. answer in the chat. So let's see. There we go. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Um, what do you call a scientist? Should we do multiple choice? Should we give them the options? Because these are hard ones. I'll give you multiple choice for this one. You can put the letter in or try to spell the word. What do we call a scientist who specializes in studying mushrooms? Is it A, pomologist, B, mycologist, or C, rheologist? So A, B, or C. All right. Let's see. We have several people that got it right. How did y'all know that? It's B. Julia Williams was the first one to respond, so she wins. Um, it's a mycologist. I have never heard of that. So Julia, I'll get in touch with you to get you a goodie, a goodie prize. Thanks for playing. We'll do some more. I learned this one. It was new to me. <laughs> yeah. And I might even be pronouncing it wrong. Who knows? This is a glazing class, not a spell, uh, spelling or pronunciation class. So, so yay. What do we have next? Oh, Lindsay, you're muted. I can't hear you. Your hands are muted and your overhead's muted. Is that better? That's better. Now we can hear you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Things happen. Did anyone get that question right? Yes, Julia Williams got it right. It's B, mycologist. We had several people get it right. Oh, I, I did not really? know that. And <laughs> also iPhone 2, whoever iPhone 2 is. Nice. Yeah. Um. So I just... Now that I've kind of sorted myself out, um, I'm just going to top uh, paint the top rim uh, or edge, I guess, of this planter. And I'm going to do, or the container, and I'm going to do the same. Um, I'm going to let the brush kind of keep that straight line for me. So because I've got a wider um, flat brush, I'm just going to run it along the top and it's going to help me get a nice smooth edge. As long as you hold the brush um, pretty like vertical and flat, like don't hold it on an angle, I guess, um, you can get a really nice edge between that. So I'm just going to do that too. Well, I've got it so I can get that to dry so I can do the second coat. So while y'all are watching, I know some people probably are glazing and some are watching, you know, put in the chat how you might decorate this thing. What would you do? Would you do you know, if you would do classic mushrooms, would you use um, stroke and code or elements or what would you do? Yeah, what color scheme would you go with? Oh, would Tiffany, you Shank is, um, Tiffany Shank is iPhone too. <laughs> Hi, yeah, Tiffany. Like, if people painted this on like, like mushrooms, would they do like natural, like kind of neutral colors? Would you go bold, like kind of poppy pop art like i'm i i just love seeing the same piece painted so many ways mm -hmm. i know Lindsay would do neutrals because she loves neutrals i would do like bright colors and i think it's um 
it'd be fun to have a display of all different styles, you know, to show your customers too. Hmm. Oh, I just saw Tiffany said mustard and oh, like all of that. Yeah. And then Deb says jungle gems on the top. That's a great idea. That's art in a jar. All you have to do is put it on top. Mm -hmm. so, and I love it. Yeah. Because like, like kids can do use those and they turn mm -hmm. over things. Um, yeah, those are so they're so much fun. And they're good for this piece because it's not a food thing, you know, it's a, you know. That's right. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I'm not worried about that. Okay, there we go. So now I've got my edge topped or my edge painted. I'm going to move my black again and then I'm just going to go in and paint my second coat of the jungle gems on the inside. So I'm going to get that big brush out again. I'm just going to tilt it. Sorry, the sun is starting to set out here. So it's just a little bit of a shadow. Can you see that okay though? I think that's good. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to say again, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but in case someone else has joined um, those little kind of divots at the bottom of this container where the legs are, um, just do like an extra little um, brush over just to kind of like scoop out that extra paint that may have settled in those. Um, because if you have too much paint in there, it might crawl once it comes out of the kiln. So that's just a really easy thing to do just to avoid that from happening. So I'm just being sure to pay attention to that as well. And then just using that brush to go straight up to the edge of the piece and um, get a straight line at the top of the container. Okay, Willie says McDonald's Grimace character was another idea for these. Yeah, there's, I mean. Because his birthday was just through the day. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. That's What's such it? a fun idea, Willie. I love it. Oh, I didn't know. Do, did do people say? have this piece now? If y'all haven't had this piece, I think you should get it because you can do so many fun things with it. What was their suggestion? I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Oh, it was the Grimace one. I was just saying, I think it'd be really fun. Mm. I think it'd be really fun to do elves. I just like the so ever since you did the little characters, it makes me want to do little little people and things. Well, and that's what's cool, right? Because it it can make it more than just a seasonal thing, um, mm -hmm. or multi seasonal. If you're doing it as a bad dream before a winter holiday, <laughs> <laughs> that can so politically correct and yes. correct right not so correct. what is it like we're not gonna have any copyright issues that's it yeah oh just wait till you see my my slideshow that I've got after with my suggestions <laughs> I was uh, I was having fun naming them so hopefully you all get a kick out that of that fun. <laughs> so we have this container and then we have the one with the sun rays on it and it's just the sun rays are just on one side and so it's this cool rays so the other side you could paint something on or leave simple or whatever we've done that with jungle gems we've done it with stroke and coat and then put shears over it like Lindsay was talking about and that's really really pretty and then we've also done um we also have the monstera leaf so that one is the same shape everything's the basic same shape but the monstera leaves there's one on each side so it's fun to do those really simply i love those with jungle gems or even doing an ombre with jungle gems and stroke and coat that's a really fun way to do that kind of look too instead of just doing jungle gems layer them up that's really fun Oh, I like the sounds of that late mm -hmm. ombreing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was, I was looking, I sat and stared at that sun uh, canister for so long. Cause I was like, Oh, there's gotta be a way you could paint something on that. And, and nothing came to me at the time. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll look at it again and be like, Oh yes, of course you could do this on it. So it is uh, funny I love how that goes. That. Yeah. Like if I'm sitting here looking at something, I can't think of it, but if somebody comes up and talks to me about it, or if we're in this kind of situation in a class, I can come up with all sorts of ideas. Oh yeah, I have my best ideas at like 2 a.m. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not painting you're relaxed. or dad near me. So I'm like, oh, I'll remember that idea. And then, you know, I don't. <laughs> right. You have to write it down. Notepad, notepad. I, yeah. that, that's hard to do too. I've done that before and then I can't read it in the morning. Yeah, it's just scribbles. Right. <laughs> All right. So I've done the second coat for that. Um, I think I'm going to leave it with two because I put that quite heavily and it's a mixture of the there um, from when I shook up the color um, before I started painting. So I think that's going to look really good. Um, like I said before, this color is going to fire a much brighter orange as. Um, some green and black 
crystal inside, which I think is just so. Um, so I think that's really, and then I also worked on the outside that are similar to the inside, just to kind of tie it all together. So I had fun picking those, but, um, you know, if you, if you, the, the world's your oyster, you can paint whatever and however you like, which is fun too. But, so I'm done with the jungle gems again for the inside. I've got two coats of the jungle gems, crystal glaze S two seven zero eight, which is Oriental caramel, uh, which is a really pretty color once fired. So I'm done with that one. So I'm going to move that one out of the way. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do my second coat of the FN 304 black velvet uh, matte foundation. And I'm going to go around the mushrooms again one more time. And um, yeah, Krista, if you want to do some trivia, that'd be a perfect time. I will do it. Wonderful. All right. Just looking at my list. Um, okay. Which European, can you put your answers in the chat? Which European country is the largest exporter of mushrooms in the world? A, Germany, B, Russia, C, Poland. I'll say it again. Which European country is the largest exporter of mushrooms in the world? A, Germany, B, Russia, C, Poland. So if you have a guess, you can put it in the chat. I did not know this answer, so. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have lots of answers already. So let's see. Anybody else before I give it away? Well, then nobody guessed Russia, which is good because that was the wrong answer. And the answer is Poland C. So June Foy was the first one. Willie, you were so close, but June got it in there right before you. So oh my gosh, how do, you, how do you know that? <laughs> I had no idea. Well, I but just see it. Who's ever know. name popped up first is what I do. Oh, I mean, no, I like, don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, how they know the answer? I have no idea. I think I'd have to guess. And I guess they love mushrooms because I don't, right? Yeah, I don't either. I think they're cute to paint, like you say, but I'm not interested in consuming them. All right, congratulations. No. So another thing, if y'all have not seen that, I've talked about oh, this before on different, um, on different classes that we've had, and I know some of you have been to many of them, but our glaze combinations on our website are really cool. Um, you can go in there, and if you're working with stoneware, there are tons of combinations that our designers have tried out, and have we have pictures of these things so you can see how they look, and that saves you so much time and money um, trying to figure those glaze combinations out. But we've also been doing low fire glaze combinations. So we have elements and jungle gems. So that's a fun way to see how they look on top of each other. So we have them on a textured bot, textured on um, vases. So you can see what they look like. But I love that little tool. So when we have them on there, we'll have the whole thing painted with one color and then the whole thing painted with the other color on top. So you can actually see the fullness of how that changes. But that's a work in progress. We have new glaze combinations every month in the mid-range, you know, the stoneware glazes and in the low fire. So every month, check that out. And we always um, put that in our emails that, you know, what's coming up and what we have, what we're showing that month. So if you, for, if you missed that, just go check it out on our website. Um, also, if you, I know you as guys are getting our emails or you should be, because you got this thing, um, but if you're not getting, um, emails or something like that, just message me on here and I'll add your email to the list. Deb wants what to know. Oops, hang on. Mm -hmm. ah. Let's make sure. Um, Deb wanting to know, will we doing new jungle gems? Yes, we're always doing some new jungle gems. There's always something fun and new at Mako. Just have to watch your emails and things. That is happy mail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we want to know too, like, so while you're sitting here listening and watching and waiting for your paint to dry, if there's stuff you want to see, oh yeah, we all, we'll do new glaze combos for everything. Um, uh, we want to know what you want to see in an email. Do you want more educational things? Do you want marketing ideas? Do you want event ideas? Do you want to see more projects? What kind of stuff do you want to see? So you can pop that in the chat or you can send me an email or just a private message on here or just message to everybody. It's fine. Projects. Okay. Projects, so, awesome. Yeah, projects. Do you like seasonal projects or do you like projects that are focused on 
specific products? That's another thing we want to know. Because there are so many products. Mm -hmm. And if there's any certain projects you want, we'd love to hear it. So if you don't think of it now, you know, shoot me a message later. Um, you can find me on uh, Facebook. You can message me there, or you can do info at makocolors.com. Well, my email is c-t-o-l-e-r at makocolors.com. I'll just put it in the chat so you can see it. That's awesome how you're looking for feedback. I love that. Yeah, it's helpful, you know, because we want to give people what we want because we can put stuff out. But, you know, what if you want something specific? Okay, both seasonally and products. Got it. Uh, kids, good for groups and classes. All right. What kind of, what ages of kids? Mm. Little kids, all ages? This is really good info. You guys are like a focus group. <laughs> yes, perfect. Perfect. Well, you have our emails there. So if you want to send any ideas. Oh, five and up. Good to know. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. I think five and up is a good, you know, if you can have like a more step-by-step -step for five and under because they always finish so quick right so what's a way that you can kind of get them to be able to paint within their ability and you know take their time i think that's a good yeah. project idea it's a great idea deb says her seniors are kids that's nice i love it <laughs> great that you work with seniors okay i've got two coats I'm just going to paint the very bottom, but I'm not going to paint the bottom of um, the feet on this just because I don't want to smudge that paint. So I'll get to that after, but already I've done two coats on the inside of this container and I've done two coats on the outside. So we're getting so close to the fun detail part. <laughs> And though it is funny, I probably would do the out, well, I would probably do the background first, the black, and then mm -hmm. I'd do the details, and then I would do the inside, because I oh, would so just let sit, sit it there and fill it in. But that's how I do stoneware, too. I do the outside, then the inside. Mm. Yeah, that's a good, I see, and that's, that's, it's just relevant to anything, whether you're painting that's a mug right. or you're painting a plate, like, what do you start with first? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The back, the front. Yeah. Details last makes sense. That several people have said that. That makes sense. Do have I think questions? so too. You kind of leave. The, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Leave the best part. Yeah. Here's a fun question. This is just for fun. Okay. Okay. In Scotland, what vegetable used to be carved into a jack o' lantern? Not a pumpkin. This is just a fun mm. one. If you can think of the answer. I'm not going to give you any options. You just guess. Oh, Julia, how did you know that? Turnips is right. She's already won something. <laughs> anyway, so. Oh my God. <laughs> how He's did you quick. know that? That's so crazy. Oh, here's another really good one. And you can't, well, this, okay. Let's see if you get this. Surely somebody's going to get this one. Um, what's the most searched for Halloween candy on Google? Just for fun. Oh, very good. Candy corn. But oh, Willie Jackson, so I'm with you. I love a good Snickers. Mm, mm -hmm. But I like candy corn. Candy corn is one of those things you love it or hate it. Kind of like cilantro. Yes. I'm I'm curious. What are everyone's thoughts? What what are your what's your position on candy corn? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, good question. Give us a yes or no on candy corn. I don't know why, but I put that before, so I'm uh, to remember which one that was. Yes, so we got a yuck. We got yuck. a no. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Deb says I <laughs> love them. I like to bite little sections off. <laughs> oh, so funny! What everybody loves. 
Uh, so, Carissa, while we, I'm just going to let that black um, mat dry. So, what I might do is I'm just going to share my screen for a moment. Um, okay. Let me um, like that. Yeah. And I'm just going to talk about some ideas that I got for people to use when they're using um, or designing the faces on these containers. Um, I'm just trying to pull up the the page for that real quick. So, I made this sheet that has different faces on it and this is just something that is either can be used by you if you are painting these pieces yourself uh, or it is for uh, customers if you have a paint your own pottery studio this is just I mean faces are always difficult to do uh, if you're not using like a little figurine that has those kind of embossed pieces already laid out for you. Um, so I've just got this available and it was sent out in the email that was uh, sent out today. It's included for it that you can yourself. Um, but this is just kind of a starting point where if you're not sure how to add a face to something kind of expression you want to go for, uh, this sheet is just kind of a little, um, not a cheat sheet maybe, but just, just a little resource for you to have. Um, so this shows kind of different designs that you can do. So I kind of went and on can or painting in container. Um, but do is you can use these as a reference point of what you want your faces to look like. So that is the thing that is included in the email that you got say from make a little is that um so yeah so that that email was sent out where you can use that resource you can have it printed out and that will just help you um decide what kind of uh faces you want to add to characters so that is a resource that is free to you i just found these images on canva i just searched expressions so uh that's where i got those ones from you can draw your own you can find your own on Canva, on Google, whatever you'd like, but that's just a free resource that uh, is available to help you design um, pieces when they have little faces. So that is a resource that is included again in the email that Mako sent out to you today with the confirmation. There's a link that you can click on and you can have those available for your personal use or studio use. Thanks. I think they're very cute. You can use them for lots of different things. I think so. I mean, I, you, when you use figurines, right? Like they've got them kind of embossed on there, but this mm -hmm. is just a good point where, um, you know, if you have painters that are new and they're not as confident, you could have them sketch the faces on first in pencil um, or a marker and then just paint over it, or they can just go for it freehand. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to go and do my third and final coat on the exterior of this container with the uh, black velvet matte foundation. And then we can get started on our cute little characters. Yeah, I think the, I find this black. the matte does seem to dry really quickly. It does, and it's super satisfying to paint with. It yeah. like it just it it paints on so easily, especially with these fan brushes. Like it's not like a struggle to get the paint on. Like the paintbrush kind of just glides across it, which is awesome. You don't hear that scratchy sound when you're running low of paint because these fan brushes just hold so much. So they're awesome for projects like this. So I've also just kind of. Um, you know, messed up a little bit <laughs> and uh, have some spots where I've gotten that black velvet on top of the mushroom. So I'll show you some tricks that I use, which you probably already know or do yourself, um, just to get those paint marks off. But we are going to be painting over it as well. Um, but part of them is going to be with white. So I might just go ahead and get some of that dark black removed just so that you don't see it showing through the white when we're done. So obviously I'm going to be painting these today with um, kind of Halloween-y characters. Um, and I like the idea of that, but as Krista said, she liked the idea of elves. So that's really cute. Um, I mean, if it's something that 
you want to have out year round, it doesn't need to be a theme, right? Like it could just be little characters um, from different things that you can use to have out year round. It doesn't need to be seasonal. Or if you like, um, you know what? Who says a season needs to be a certain time of year? You can leave those decorations out as long as you want. <laughs> That's right. We'd love to see what y'all paint. If you're not painting tonight and you paint later or you are painting tonight, I mean, go to our social media, like our Facebook. We have Mako Creative Studios. Um, also, it also says Mako PYOP. And you can post it in there. We'd love to see what you do, whether it's yeah, this kind of design or, you know, something different. Yeah, that would just be my biggest thing to send you away with today. Like, obviously, these are mushrooms and they would be very cute painted like mushrooms. but just try and push yourself outside of like that and see what you could come up with. Like what else does it look like besides a mushroom that you could paint it as? I just think that's a really fun, creative way to get your brain thinking about different things, seeing things differently. I, I think too, like if you're video samples like that on yourself, like that's just so exciting for your customers to see another way um, of using it. Um, and I mean, that's something that, when I had my studio, that's something that I learned all the time. My customers just seeing something for what it was, but they painted it a different way than I. So much inspiration. And I just love seeing all the different ways things are painted. Me too. And I think that if you have a piece that may not be selling or something, it's painting it in a different way just makes all the difference. I mean, I could have something not even fired yet. I would have it on a table, like wait, you know, drying, waiting to go back in the back. And yeah. people go, oh, that's so cute. So reimagining things or like I had some canister sets one time and when I broke them up and called them different things, they all sold like crazy. So interesting, hey? Yeah. So Just June says, happy. oh, I'm sorry. I was going to read some of these chats. Uh, June, oh, says yeah, yeah, no, June says she got a battery operated eraser from Amazon that works really great. How interesting. And then oh, for mixing up paint smart. Yeah. Paint oh brilliant and deb says use a bamboo skewer with paint with the point to clear off the wrong color yep that's a good thing too oh nice yeah i, use a I like to use the... yeah um, that little, that brush that needs, has edge or... yeah that's smart i like the uh uh the racer idea though the yeah. um, that you got from him that sounds really cool all right i'm done my third coat i'm just gonna leave sure. that to dry a little bit longer and then we can get started on our little characters so i'm just going to talk about uh, the colors that i use for that as well so if you are painting long you can get those colors um ready in a, tr in a tray uh, oh i just have to do top of this to get more are Looks one, good. two, three, four, five, six. So there's six mums that are on this care container. So that's containers if you break it up six. a little bit. There you go. Um, I'm just gonna do three today just for speed thing so that we're not here all night doing little painting. So I'm just gonna do the three because you only see the that I'm painting it anyway. So I'm just going to do three. Um, but yeah, that's something that you can think about what you would want to add if you did different care. You know, take your R. Uh, you do all those world tours right now. And uh, it was, and I think that's really cool. Maybe not maybe specifically mushroom. Oh, we've got a question from Tiffany about the matte black. Is it stable or moving? They are more stable. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah. They, I mean, stroke and coats don't really move either. So they're very similar to a stroke and coat. The viscosity is thinner on the opaque foundations, but I don't worry about any movement at all with the mats. Mm -hmm. So while I'm waiting for that, to 
um, dry. I'm just going to, because I want to share my screen again. So I'm just going to move closer to Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm sorry, it keeps kicking me out. Um, but I'm just going to show you some of those ideas that I had about using different pieces um, for something else. So hold on just a sec while I move around. I'm just going to share my screen real quick and I'm going to show you some of those ideas that I was talking about um, for different Mako pieces and how you can have them painted as um, different pieces than they actually are. So let me just share my screen real quick. That's such a fun idea. That's a great resource. Yeah, I just think that's really fun. I always love looking at them and seeing what else they can be. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, could would you mind making me the host again? Sorry, oh, Krista. Yeah. Thanks for being patient with me, everyone. Yeah, I'll just make you a co-host <laughs> and maybe that will work. Okay, that wonderful. Works. Okay. That's the one. Okay. All right. Forget okay. the there we go. Great. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to show you some of the ideas that I had. So these are all Mako pieces um, that I found from their website. And this is just my suggestions on if you ever wanted to host a themed event in your studio, um, rather than painting a design on a plate or a mug or something, um, you know, maybe if you don't have a Cricut machine that helps make designs easier for people to use. Um, this is just pieces that are already on the shelf that if you don't sell them exclusively at an event or um, can't sell them as what they are, this is just another opportunity to paint them as something else. So here we go. So I'm going to call the first ones for if you wanted to host a bad dream before a winter holiday event, um, some different characters. So this is the Mako stocking cap tree, which I've painted before in the past um, as a certain ways wizard school that has different houses. <laughs> uh, I painted those colors for each level of the hat, um, which is, I mean, something that's really versatile. And then that way you can have it out as a seasonal decoration, or you can have it out year round in your house. Um, you could paint them, you know, just each hat as um, a certain character to mimic their clothing or perhaps part of their appearance. Um, or you can paint their face on it. So have just little faces stacked on each hat, um, each tree or each hat of the stocking cap tree. Um, that's an option that you could do for that. Um, oh, Lindsay, is, we're, we're just seeing your header. You know, we're not seeing the, sh the slides yet. What the heck? Maybe click the word present down there at the bottom in the purple and that might show. Maybe. Um, I'm not even seeing. Where do you see present? Oh, oh, I already did that. Oh, no. Okay. Can you see that? No. Right can now, you see the theme pieces. Uh, I see theme pieces, but then it has a little tab out over it. We see Canva. Yeah, we're seeing. Oh, there it is. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I'll just do yeah, it that perfect. way. Perfect. Okay. Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, this is what I was talking about. If you didn't, I'll just kind of go over it again. This is the Mako stocking cap tree. And I've painted this before with different house colors from a certain wizarding school. Um, so, each level of the hats had different color schemes for each one to represent something different. So, you could do that um, based off of colors. You could do it based off of characters, characteristics, something from their personality or their clothing or um, their appearance. You can have something different painted for each of those stocking caps. Um, you could also just paint their faces on each one. So each hat is a different character. Um, and that's something that you could have out year round or you could use it seasonally, whatever kind of decor you like to use. Um, so that's a really fun idea because there's lots of possibilities on what you could do with that for sure. Um, I mean, you could even do it where let's say one side is Christmassy and one side is Halloween. So you just kind of rotate it on your shelf and then you've got two pieces in one. So that's definitely an option that you can do with that. And that is using the uh, MB1348 stocking cap tree from Mako. The next piece that I would do, I'm calling this Yally. <laughs> <laughs> um is oh, you can use fun. this mb1584 heart angel um and you could do her little dress that she's got on the bisque angel there to paint uh to look similar to a certain character uh you could also have her hair and skin painted the same colors as that character uh, from a particular movie <laughs> um so that's a definitely a way you could do that as well 
Um, and just, just, just how, how can you use that? Like, if you're not using that heart angel year round, what, what, or you're using it, it sells best at Christmas. Let's say this is just another option for getting that piece moved off yourself by, by someone who is a big fan of that movie and, uh, would paint one in a heartbeat. So the next one that I've got here, this is, I'm calling it Sack Jellington. <laughs> Uh, this is just an easy ornament that is with the MB8687, the three inch globe ornament, and then the MB868 four inch globe ornament, um, which are so great. Um, so versatile. They're definitely probably the popular piece in every studio during the holiday seasons, but also cool because you could have that out year round, um, depending on what kind of ribbon you tied it with. Um, you might have a spot in your house where you could have that hung, or if you have a plant that lives in your house year round, you could give it, spice it up a little bit, decorate it, add, a, add an ornament to it with a, a different character space on it. Another one, and this is the one I was kind of excited about, was Okay, am I going to say this right? Saguaro cactus vase? Is that the right way, Krista? I can't remember how to say it. Cigar. I always say Saguaro, but I don't know. Oh, okay. For well, North Carolina. That one. That <laughs> okay. cactus with the arms. Cactus with the arms, yes. Um, if you painted it in the shade of green you could have your own boogie oogie <laughs> um and then paint paint the face on there as well i really like the texture on that one because i think that's kind of cool it kind of goes with the character that's kind of like stitched up i kind of like the look of that um so that would be a fun way to use that piece as something other than a cactus although it would still be painted green so that's kind of cool as well mm -hmm. um the other one i'm going to call this the yammer of the town <laughs> that could be painted on the MB1462 Jolly Christmas Tree. So this is another one too, because this particular character has different expressions from the front to the back. Um, so you could have one character painted on the front side of the tree and then another personality on the back side of it. So that's kind of like a two-in-one decoration that you could get used by that. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be specific to a bad dream before a winter holiday character. You could just have fun with it and use it with for whatever you'd like. Um, but I love the top of that Jolly Christmas tree because where those um, kind of three scallops are at the top, that almost looks like a hat. So that can kind of divide the face and the body or a hat from your um, character that you're painting on there. Uh, so when I had my Paint Your Own Pottery Studio, we used to host... Um, um, Perry Hotter <laughs> events <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and I had, <laughs> I had the most fun painting samples for that particular, uh, movie I theme, because there were so many pieces that were already available that just needed a little reimagining to have them look like something else. So gnomes of course are so popular and I'm sure many people have those, um, you know, painted them for yourself, painted them in a studio. Um, so these are two Perry Hotter characters that I call <laughs> Mumblemore and Garrid, um, where you can use the MB043 hipster gnome, got that beautiful kind of wizard hat on top of him and that long beard. Um, and then you've got the MB042 hooray gnome that's just a happy kind of jolly looking guy. And, you know, just picking the colors, um, to kind of reflect those characters that gnome can go from a gnome to a wizard or a gamekeeper. So there's some really cool things that you can do just with re reimagining what colors you paint it with. Um, and I think that's, what's cool about this because, because these gnomes don't have faces like eyes or anything, you don't have to paint any really finicky details. Um, just depending on the way you paint those, um, those characters on there, it would be pretty obvious who they were right um so let's say this mumble more if you paint a white beard and a beautiful kind of uh red cloak and um paint stars on the hat well I mean that's pretty self-explanatory of what it is and uh any true fan would know that and recognize that so I think that was a really I thought that was a really fun one so the next one and this one might be a little bit obvious because it is an owl but I'm calling it wed hig and uh, I've got the MB1477 Faceted Owl, which is a beautiful piece. Like it's just so much bigger and more beautiful in person than it does show in the pictures. Um, and then the newer MB1563 Owl Facetini um, that could be painted to look like a little um, 
snowy owl letter carrier. <laughs> so that is an easy way to, um, I think the best part about that is if you did, because it is a snowy white owl, um, you could just have your customers or yourself paint the details on and leave the background white and then just dip it in clear glaze. And then you save yourself that time of painting three coats on, uh, the white piece, especially with it not being functional, like just make it a little bit easier and quicker and just dip it in the clear glaze and that white bisque will stay white. Uh, the next idea that I have is um, I'm calling it a Tepronis, <laughs> which is um, with the MB1566 Fawn Facetini um, and just using some really pretty blues. Uh, jungle gems will look really nice on that. Um, you could also do that with different um, shaped pieces as well. It doesn't have to be a fawn, but obviously with that uh, film, the fawn is the one that is in the dough. The dough and the stag are the ones that are the most uh, recognizable. Um, but that could be a really fun event. You could have people come in and pick their tapronis and uh, pick the animal that speaks most to them and paint it with some really pretty blue colors. And um, you could do like a watercolor technique on that. That would be beautiful. I also hope people get the references that I'm making and I don't sound too crazy right now. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you're smart to be generic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so no, here, I'll you later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so these are Perry Hotter uh, mushroom characters that you could do as well. Um, you know, you could have this the stem of the mushroom look kind of like their uh, uniform. You could add characteristics of each character to the mushroom top um, with faces if you'd like. Um, I mean, the mushrooms, there would just be so many ideas. Um, the other one that uh, came to mind was, I mean, I'm going to have to name drop this one because I don't know how to change it up but Fantasia the one where it's got the little dancing mushrooms in that's just totally what those remind me of and I love them so much they're so mm -hmm. cute um the next one is um another Perry Hotter character idea um this is Bang who is a cowardly guard dog that could be painted with the MV1517 faceted dog um that'd be really cute. Uh, the other one is the one MB1516 faceted cat that could be painted as, um, Mephesser Peconagle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so crazy saying these words. <laughs> um, but those are both references to, uh, a certain book or film and, um, true diehard fans would definitely see the significance of that and be excited by it. Um, so I tried to stick with, with, references that had Halloween incorporated at some point, but also just theme pieces that would work for events. Um, I, I typically don't really go for like the blood and gore of Halloween, but I was particularly, sorry, particularly excited about this idea. Uh, so this, my last one that I'll show you, if I were to paint something based off of this pieces that Mako has, I introduced to you Credi Fruger. <laughs> Um, and the texture of this MB1568 round hammered pumpkin um, definitely looks like some skin that's seen some stuff. And I think that'd be a really cool, um, you know, workshop to have people painting their own version on a pumpkin. Um, if there's like die high horror, oh my gosh, die hard horror fans out there, that'd be a really cool way. Cause I love the texture on that one. And I've seen it painted very beautifully, but I feel like you could gotta get a little bit gnarly with it too. <laughs> so um, those are some suggestions that I have that if you were to paint or have a themed event, um, just take a look at the pieces that are already available to you. Maybe if it's already in your studio and it's not selling well, or uh, you just have pieces that you paint yourself that uh, you're feeling uninspired by because of you're thinking of like a literal way to paint it. Think of just something else. Think of another way you can kind of put a spin on it. Um, I mean, the pumpkin shape is kind of similar to a head so you could definitely paint a face on there but don't go with like a traditional jack jack-o-lantern kind of face see what else you can just push yourself see what you can kind of do with that um so those are the ideas that i came up with um just using the mako pieces that are available on their website um that you could use to paint as samples or paint for yourself and have um events for in your studio as well nice good so ideas that's what I came up with good stuff all right, now we'll go back to painting. <laughs> All right. I have you your have hands some... spotlighted again. Perfect. Cool. 
If you have some trivia too, you're welcome to do yeah, that. Yeah, just thinking. And I'll get okay, set up. so here's one. This will be for a Mega gift certificate. And which of the following is the deadliest type of mushroom in the world? A, death cap. B, death hat. C, death top. Which one is the most deadly in the world? Death cap is A. B is death hat. C is death top. And you can put your answers in the chat. Okay, anybody else? I can't ask Lindsay because she knows the answer. She came up with all these questions. Okay. I, mean, I did them before though. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, the answer is death cap. So Deb, you won. Way to go. Deb, what's your last name? You can type it in. Ah, oh, thought that might be you, Deb Board. Okay, great. Let's see. Let's do one more. We will do. How about? Here's an interesting one. Um, which of the following terms refers to the head of a mushroom? A. Flowering body. B. Growing body. C. Fruiting body. You can only win once. But you can still put an answer in. So we have flowering body, growing body, fruiting body. Anybody else? All right, well, we have a lot of right answers, but Robin hasn't won yet, and so she gets to win. So Robin, you won. I don't think you won. Nice. Yes, and that did. was flowering body. It is fruiting body. Robin got it right. Robin, what's your last name? We have lots of correct people though. So thank you for playing. Yeah. Well, how congratulations. How fitting, because now we're moving on to paint the fruiting body of our awesome. mushroom. That was perfect timing for that question. Yeah. Good deal. Got your last name, Robin. Thank you. So I'll contact you winners, um, the the trivia winners tomorrow. Yeah, that's awesome. Take it away. So I, I, uh, I said I was going to tell the colors so that people get the board, and then I abandoned that apparently really quickly. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Um, so I'm just going to show, because um, there's a few places where I I, uh, I didn't paint so hot. I didn't paint so well around it. So I'm just going to touch it up a little bit. I'm just using the end of the uh fan brush with the beveled edge. I find that works really well for scraping paint off. Um, eraser does work as well too. I've used that before, but I like the electric race eraser. That sounds a little bit easier for your hands instead of just uh, erasing for hours or minutes, however long you need to do that. Um, the other one, you could use a Q-tip too if you needed to with water, but that might um, just rehydrate it and push it around a little bit. But um, I've done that before on some things too. So different ways, I'm sure everyone has their um, their own ways of removing paint, but my go-to is just to use the beveled edge of a paintbrush because I already have it right there. It's right in front of me while I'm working on this. So I'm just going to clean up some of the edges. So this is why I kind of thought about that idea of painting the details on the mushrooms first. Um, and then you could just go over the edges with the Mako's wax resist so that you could then go and paint the black around it. And then it would just crawl off of the wax resist so that your design that you've painted underneath isn't affected by uh, overlapping colors anywhere. All right. So another way you could do it is if you painted your mushrooms white with white foundations, just just like one coat, and you did your black around, it'd be really easy to scrape that black off of that white too. Oh, interesting, Krista. So do that before you do your black. Yeah, you could do that. And that way, if you got black on there, it's so much easier to scrape off color off of another color like that. That, that would work. Oh, Just another yeah, idea. You know what? That makes so much sense, but I would have never thought of that. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Emery Brilliant. board. That's another good idea. Cool. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to be painting these mushrooms with their fruiting body tops. Uh, and I'm going to be using um, stroke and coat colors for these ones. So the main colors that I'm going to be using is cottontail. 
and that's uh, stroke and coat color 16. Um, and I'm gonna be using that on the underside of the mushroom as well as the base. Um, so I do three coats on the underside of the mushroom and the base. So that's one color that I'll be needing um, a bit of. I also have stroke and coat 15, which is tuxedo. And that one will be for the stripes on the base of the mushroom, um, as well as some of the details on the faces. I'll just leave that canister there so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got, yeah, the tuxedo on the stripes and then the tuxedo on some of the face. I've also got the cotton tail on the white of the eyes for the characters as well. Um, the other colors that I use this guy over here, um, that is SC103 Lavender, which is one of Mako's newer colors. So I was really excited to get to use that one because it's the prettiest purple color. The next one I've got for this middle mushroom here, um, that's with Stroke and Coat 27 Sour Apple. Uh, this third mushroom over here, that is SC23 Jack-O-Lantern, so kind of appropriate for a seasonal class like this, but that's good. Those are the three colors that I'm using um, for the fruiting body tops of these mushrooms, which I'm also going to be doing three coats of. Um, and then the last color that I have, just to add a little bit of um, detail, is SC89, which is Cutie Pie Coral, um, and I use that to paint cute little lips on uh, that mushroom there, that middle one. So you can follow, if you are painting along, you're welcome to paint these characters however you'd like, but please just show me how you do it because I'd love to see. Um, but I'm just gonna get some of this paint poured into my palette. Um, now I was kind of silly because like I said, I am in Kelowna. So um, I don't have my full inventory of supplies here with me like I normally do. So I'm gonna be painting these with uh, just a liner brush because unfortunately that's all I've got at the moment, but I can make do with that. Um, but just a round uh, brush would be easier just to get the color on faster. So I'm just gonna pour cotton veil, jack-o-lantern, Lavender and sour apple. And then I'll also just get the tiniest little bit of cutie pie coral. Like literally just a drop is what I just put in my tray for cutie pie coral, just that tiny little bit. Um, and then I'm going to get my tuxedo as well in there. So I'm doing stroke and coat on the top of these fruiting bodies of these mushrooms for the characters. Um, I mean, you could definitely play around with those and do um, jungle gems as well if you wanted to, if you painted the face of your character first and then, um, you know, you could paint around the details if you wanted to with the jungle gem, that might be a little time consuming. But if someone wanted to do that, you could definitely do that. Oh, and I'm just seeing Deb's question to repeat the colors on the mushrooms. This top one is Lavender, which is SC103. Uh, this one here is, oh, thank you, Krista. Mm -hmm. Way ahead of me. Uh, SC27 Sour Apple and SC23 Jack-O-Lantern. And those are all on the technique sheet as well, which you've got um, I believe it was in the last email that Mako sent out. There's the supply list there. Um, and you'll get a technique sheet for that as well. So you can print it off or just have it on your computer to use for um, future if you paint this yourself. So I said before, because I'm only going to be seeing one side of these, I'm just going to be painting three of the mushrooms today, just like the characters that I have um, already painted. So I'm just going to be painting the bottom underside and the stem of three mushrooms with um, Stroke and Coat's uh, SC16 Cottontail. So I will get started on that. And I'm just, again, I, like I said, I don't have other brushes here, so I'm just using a liner brush to do that. Um, I would typically probably use a br bigger brush just to make it go a little bit faster, but that's all I've got with me, so bear with me. Um, the other thing just to I'll say before I get started, um, there is like an obvious difference between the top and the underside of the mushroom, but if it makes it easier, you can just take a pencil and draw a line 
uh, just so you know where to stop painting if that makes it easier for you. Just so you know, um, because I sometimes get really into my painting, I'm not totally paying attention. I'll just paint the whole thing. So that just will stop me from uh, doing too much. And I'm gonna be applying three coats of this just so that I get good uh, opaque coverage of that once it's been out of the fired and out of the kiln. So the edges of this are kind of nice too. Uh, the edges of the mushroom, um, the way they kind of are embossed on the container is it's just kind of easy for you to just kind of drag your line, your edge of your paintbrush along the edge and it'll stay pretty clean, if that makes sense. If I explain that well. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about anything? Robin says, couldn't you just use clear? Yes, yes you could just use clear. Yeah. yeah. If you wanted to be white, white, but you could just leave it plain and let it be clear. Well, wait, are you talking about dipping it, Robin? Mm -hmm. Because the reason, yeah, that we don't want to dip it because then it would be not matte anymore, if that's the question you're asking. Oh, you're not asking that. You're just talking about brushing on clear, maybe? Mm, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you could brush on clear if you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's up to you. But any, you know, of course, any clear you get on the black will make it not matte anymore. But I think you get that. But that's another thing, too. Like if you did your, if you had your white and your foundations, you know, there's always different ways to do things. You could do that and then do your black, you know, and you could do it that way or you could do it this way. There's always a different way. Whenever we teach a class, you know, we teach it and then somebody says, well, couldn't you do it this way? And we're like, yeah, you could, you know, because sometimes we don't even think about it, you know, mm -hmm. right? We're creating the project. So there's always a different way to do it. And it depends yeah. Like the stroking coat is a thicker viscosity than the foundation. So I really like how nice and bold it's going to be on this piece too. Yeah, and you can just make use of what you have too. So that's yeah. a oh exactly. Yeah, if you prefer to brush on clear, you could totally do that. Yep. And I'm doing white, like this is cotton tail. So this is kind of a pure white. Um, but there's some kind of um off-white colors that Mako has mm -hmm. in stroke as well so like there's antique white which is a foundation there's old lace which is which is a stroke and coat um so those are all kind of off what or rawhide cashew later i mean there are so many different colors of stroke and coats that you would be able to um paint this into for the base of your mushroom so whatever you know whatever speaks to you that i went with the white but uh, i really kind of wanted because i was doing the black and white stripes i really wanted that bold black and white um contrast but you can totally do whatever else you would like. Yeah, true. Because the bisque isn't always white, 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 you know? So sometimes it is nice to have that white on there. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I've got one coat on two and now I'm just moving on to my third one. Yeah, it's nice when you're doing a piece like this, when you can just go around and by the time you finish the first, you know, the last one, you can start the second coat on the first one, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Yeah. Yeah, and what's nice too, if you wanted to, like these colors mix so well together, if you wanted to make your own color or if you wanted to do kind of like an ombre look on the base of the mushroom stems, you could do that too. Um, mushrooms are just so popular right now for like home decor. Um, so once I get this last stem painted, I'm gonna show you a picture I found, uh, which was at, uh, Home Sense, which is kind of like a home goods, mm -hmm. our home goods version out here in Canada. Um, and I saw these really cute mushrooms and they had like the bases of them painted the similar color to the top of the mushroom, but they were like ombre into the white on the base of the mushroom stem. Um, so I'll show you that picture because I took one because I thought that was really cute. So that's something you could also do too. So let me just pull that up on my phone real quick and I'll show you. And then We'll let those dry a little bit more and then I can go back to painting my second coat. 
Just have to find it in here somewhere. So while y'all are, while she's pulling that up, here's just a fun, a fun question to answer. Um, Halloween was celebrated for the first time ever in the United States in what year? So what year was Halloween first celebrated in the United States? And this is just for fun. So you can put your answers out there if you have a suggestion. What year was Halloween first celebrated in the United States? Anybody have a guess? I can't guess because I already know the answer and that would not be fair, would it? But I don't know what I, if I would have guessed this year that is listed as the answer. Hmm. We have one answer. Who else? Anybody else have an answer? Oh, those are similar. Yeah, they are. Any more? Okay, the answer is 18 in the 1840s. Which oh, is so close. close. <laughs> Y'all were really good guessing in the 1800s. I don't know when I would have guessed. That's great. Yeah, really, 1840s. So here's that picture I was wondering okay. on. Now I can show you it about better than <laughs> trying to explain it. So it's just on oh, my yeah. Phone. Yeah, so you can see the bottom of these mushrooms, like they're the same color as the top. And then they kind of just like ombre up into the base. So that's definitely something that you could do as well on, um, you know, you could, you could do it on these ones if you wanted to, or you could just um, do it on another one as well. Like another mushroom that you paint, you could have, but I thought that was cute too, just to add a little bit more color into it. Mm -hmm. I love so, that. Very different. And simple. I was strolling through. Yeah. I was strolling through and saw that and I was like, oh, that's, I like that. All right. So now my. Well, my first mushroom that I painted with my first coat of cottontails dry. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint my second coat on that. I find too with stroke and coat and because I'm using such a small brush, I'm definitely going to do three coats just so that I can ensure that um, everything's covered the same amount. Um, the one thing that I'm going to do too, or pay attention to is just painting in different directions with my brush strokes just so that I'm sure I'm covering everything um you know I say I'm going to do that and then I might not but <laughs> I do try and pay attention to it at some spots too so it's just easier to paint this on vertical because it's got that sloped edge so but on larger pieces like plates that's that definitely comes in handy to paint in two different directions just so that you're sure you've got an even coverage on all the surface area I really like the contrast of the the glossy stroke and coat since that you know it fires glossy without any clear on it because we're doing three coats. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that contrast with the black mat. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and then that really glossy jungle gem inside too. Yeah, and you know what? What one thing I think it was it was Robin that asked about clear. We have done a project before. I think it was actually in a pottery camp where we did a black mat and then we used the brush on clear to do some little, it was underneath a gnome and it looked like some grass kind of underneath it. It just looked like a little highlights and it was just yeah. glazed brushed on. It was really cool. And so there's some fun that. things you can do. Yeah. Yeah, I you use that. the silk screen with the clear glaze. That's right. So yeah. adding like clear glaze on the mat or doing the stroke and coat even just on top of the mat and not, you know, how we have it separated here. That's another different look. and. You know, the stroking coats are so highly pigmented, you can see them on top of there. I'd still do, I'd still do three coats, but it just gives a different look and it's nice and glossy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fun. Like when you get glazes that can provide different results like that, even though they all go through the same firing process. Like, I think it's just so cool to have a piece with different, like showcasing different glazes like that in the yes, finish. For sure. Yeah, that's one thing, you know, Mako has so many different kinds of glazes and then on our, our team, we have so many different kinds of artists. You know, we have people that have been, you know, throwing mm -hmm. pots for years. We have people that have been doing the more traditional route for years that have poured molds and have taught classes and, and paint your own pottery people and people trained in fine arts otherwise that are painting ceramics now. So we have, we kind of run the gamut and it's really fun to work with the products because you can do so many things with them. They're so versatile. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's it cool too, seeing like the resurgence of mold pouring too, like on social media, there are a couple people, a couple accounts that I've found that um, show you the process of pouring molds and like they do mystery mold reveals because they'll get molds and they won't know what they are. And so they'll pour them. And I just think it's so cool to see it coming back that way too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't personally have any desire <laughs> to pour molds, but uh, I don't have much workspace to work with. So that's just a bit much for me, but uh, I think it'd be really cool to learn one day. Yeah. It definitely gives you an appreciation for the bisque. <laughs> have you made molds before? Have you poured molds before Krista? I have not. I have cleaned them. When I had my studio, a lady sold me a bunch of um, greenware that she had poured somewhere well, somewhere had already been cleaned and fired and some had not. And so I had oh, to learn yeah. how to clean greenware. I do not have the patience. It's, a, it's such an art. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. Is there anyone that like doing this tonight is, does there anyone that pours their own mold? Molds? I bet, I bet there are. Or maybe if not in this group, in the people that registered that are be watching it later. Mm. Yeah. We have a good variety of people that have signed up for the event. You know, a lot of times we'll have people everybody signs up and then some are able to come live and some are not. And so we have right. paint your own potteries on here. We have traditionals, we have all kinds of folks on here. And of course I'm around the world too. Yeah. I, which I love too. That's so cool. Yeah. Julia says she buys greenware from a local studio and cleans the greenware to fire at home. Oh, bless you. I just, Oh, wow. That's cool. I think that's cool though, too. Cause you get things that aren't, um, you know, if you're a studio that has a lot of other studios around you, you can have, mm -hmm different stuff, which is kind of cool too. Yeah, exactly. So I've got three coats. No, I've got two coats. Oh, geez. I've got two coats of white cotton tail on the bases of my mushrooms and the underside. So while I wait for those to dry, I'm going to get started and I'm going to paint uh, this little mushroom here. I'm going to paint three coats of that with um, on that with uh, stroke and coat 103 lavender, which is one of the newer colors for Mako's uh, stroke and coat lineup. And I love it because it looks really blue when it's wet and then it becomes very purple once it's been fired. Yeah, it's a nice purple. We have we have some really great new colors. Mm -hmm, I agree. Is anybody on this call going to the CCSA convention in August, August uh, 24th through 28th? So soon. Yeah, if you're not familiar, it's Contemporary Ceramic Studios Association, um, made up of primarily paint your own pottery studios. There are some mobile studios and the different um, few traditional folks in there. Um, Willie's going, yay! Nice, it's a great oh, resource. Good. You guys can meet in person. Yeah, great resource for um, connection and education. And I mean, I've been a member for years when I had my studio too, and it was really helpful. Oh, Tiffany will be there. Cool, awesome. Y'all come by and see us at our booth. Oh, you're going to all have so much fun. We're doing making tags. We have lots of fun stuff planned. But if you can't go, you know, check out our website and there's lots of good inspiration there. Oh my gosh. I could look. No, sorry. I could look, but I have looked like for hours <laughs> yeah. on all the resources on the Mako website. So it's, there's just so much there. Uh, I'm going to be doing the middle one now with SC27, which is sour apple. I've got one coat of the lavender on my other mushroom. So I'm just going to paint this one while I wait. And again, I'm doing these with these really tiny liner brushes because I don't have other ones. So it's taking me a little bit longer to do them, but uh, you could definitely do this with just a bigger round brush. I love the name of this one too, Sour Apple, because that's kind of folly too, right? Yeah. Apple picking, bobbin for oh. apples. Willie says she checks out our website when looking for inspiration for Ladies Night or other events. Good. I'm glad. There's a lot well, of good out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it definitely makes it easier because if you have a, like Mako's website has a picture of it already too, right? So if you mm -hmm. want to start advertising for it, you can use their photo from their website sure. and just paint your own samples so that, you know, you're familiar with the process as well. But that's a great idea. 
Yeah, for sure. And, you know, sometimes we don't always think about like you can take a project that you see and put it on a different shape. So mm -hmm. use that inspiration. Like I was looking for something to do a wax resist project today and I found a piece that I really liked and it was on a vase that I don't have, but I was doing it on something else. So, I mean, it's so easy to do that. And sometimes we forget that and our customers forget that. So it, that's when it's good to have several pieces of bisque with the same or similar designs to show uh, different op opportunities and different ways like to change that design up. Like I like to do a dinner set and I might have this whole design, all these different elements to it. And then I do a, a plate with everything. And then I do a bowl and I just take a few of those elements out and put it on the bowls and maybe one of those elements out and put it on the mug. So it's nice yeah, for people to see different ways. I love that. Um, so now I'm just going to do my first coat of SC23 Jack-O-Lantern on this last mushroom over here while I wait for the other things to dry. So that's what I'm moving on to now. Yeah, when we did one, I can't even tell you which one it was, but when we did a virtual event, Krista, where I had kind of like those ice cream theme designs, mm -hmm. uh, someone oh, was yeah. painting the ice cream cone design, which I had done on the Mako clay canvas. Mm -hmm. She painted it on a lizard. And oh, I loved that's so, it so great. <laughs> I loved it so much. Yeah. So smart. So different and so cool. And it looks so good once it was fired. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish this one up and then I'm just gonna go back and do my third and final coat of the cotton tail on the bases of these mushrooms. And I've got one coat of each color on the top of those mushrooms. Has anyone got um, their fall scheduled line kind of started thinking about that if they have a studio of events you're going to offer? Yeah, I it's, it's summer, but crazy. <laughs> you got to think ahead, right? You do. That's, that's the hardest thing, living ahead. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in the, you're, you're all, most of you are in the States too, but um, I know your summer kind of ends a little, starts sooner and ends before ours here in Canada. So mm -hmm. maybe you're already getting ready for back to school. Yeah. I think some, in some places like in the North and then it just kind of depends on where you are, have already gone back uh, Okay. So yeah. back next week. We don't go back till later, you know, it just kind of depends. But I didn't like it when I had my studio when people started going back early. It just I was like, ah, come back and paint. Yeah, because I always found the last week of summer too. People were trying to get their last kind of vacations in too, and I just mm -hmm. it was always kind of slow and quiet. Yeah, for sure. Now I'm curious if there's anyone that is not a paint your own pottery studio owner, and you're just learning. Um, you know, painting techniques for yourself. If you have um, like a link to your Instagram or like a shop that you have, like we'd love to see your work too. Oh yeah, good call. Yeah, feel free to share. I think that'd be a really cool way to learn about some new artists and see what they get up to. I love like the Mako Mud Room and um, what's the other one? Clay Society? Uh, there's Mako Earthenware Society. There's Mako Mud Room. Uh, yeah, Earthenware. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. I love seeing what um, people do because I'm no longer a paint your own pottery studio owner. Um, but so I'm in the earthenware society group and I just love seeing what people do with the same products that studios offer, but what they do with it. Exactly. Themselves. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, there's lots of good information and people are really helpful in those groups, I think. Uh, if you have yes. questions, you can message us on Facebook too. Um, we always monitor that. So if you have questions, we can answer them. Yeah. And it's just, a, it's such a great resource, free resource for people that just need help, right? Like when I opened my studio, I had so many people that I could turn to if I needed help with, you know, financial stuff or re uh, rent, rental or lease stuff for my unit. Um, but I didn't have anyone to ask like creative questions to like that, like specifically mm -hmm. for PYOP or, you know, just pottery in general. And those groups are such wonderful resources with people who have probably been through 
all the hardships or trial and error processes, and they're just so willing to share the correct information to save you time and struggles. So I love that. Here's Willie's answer to what she does. Um, she says they close their studio the week kids go back to school for three days and take a vacation, which I love. When they nice. come back, um, August is their slow month and they start rough drafting their calendar for the next year. So that's so smart. You get refreshed and then you can start your calendar because if you don't, you know, you just kind of are blocked as to what to do. I love mm -hmm. that, book, Willie. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, ha I think it's so important for people to refresh themselves. I've written several articles for CCSA on and you and I've talked about this in the past too about your good mm -hmm. mental health and taking breaks and painting pottery sometime you know yeah and, or even being creative in other ways to help you regain like get rejuvenated for what you do and get inspired yeah absolutely yeah because I think one of the things I heard the most when I owned my studio is people being like oh you must paint all day and I was like I can't even remember the last time I picked up a paintbrush so to right. be able to do that and just paint mm -hmm. and not paint for a sample or paint for anything like that just feels so good and it kind of just you know if you have that painter's block it can kind of get that out of the way just to get you going yeah that's right all right so my three coats of the cottontail on the underside and the stem of the mushrooms is done so now i'm just going to go back and i'm going to do a second coat of the lavender sour apple and uh, jack -o -lan jack -o lantern Yeah, this this lavender is very different from out of the bottle at versus fired. And I'll show you that. Can you see? Yeah, how blue oh, it does look really blue, doesn't it? And how purple? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very different. So it's just good. Uh, <laughs> it's a little reminder for uh, studio owners or just, I mean, if you're painting it yourself, you you can probably remember that. But um, I used to have to reassure people all the time that yes, your color that you picked on the wall there will turn out that color. It's just light from the bottle. <laughs> I, find, I find purples have the biggest transformation too. Yeah, they do seem to change the most. You know, Mako was actually the first company to come up with glazes to, they were specifically made for the paint room pottery market to mm -hmm. make these glazes that they look more like what they do and, you know, when they're fired, you know, so like that one does look you know, more different, but in the past, you know, it was more, things look like elements. It looks brown and then it's going to turn blue or, you know, it looks right. orange and it's going to turn. But so Mako did that with paint your own pottery studios in mind to make it easier for customers to do. Oh, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. How interesting. That must have been, that, that, that must have been a lot of science to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> we have some smart people. Yes. No kidding. I think that's fascinating though. I mean, I don't get the chemistry part of it, but I like the color part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool to study color. Yeah. I don't know really where you do that, but I think that'd be really cool. <laughs> Colorology. Yeah. I love it. All right. So I got two coats done on the sour apple and the lavender. Now I just got to do my third coat of my jack-o-lantern. And then once the base of my uh, mushrooms have dried, I can also go ahead and do my stripes on the base. So um, that's something that you could, you know, you can choose which is easiest for you. You can just go ahead and paint it on. You can sketch them out in pencil first so that you kind of have like a guideline of where you are going to be painting. Um, I kind of, I didn't fuss too much about these being super straight because I kind of like the idea that they're kind of wonky looking. Um, if that is something that you did like, you could definitely use like uh, masking tape or like that thin, thin, thin masking tape and tape it off so that you get crisper lines. But um I like the wonkiness on this kind of, it kind of goes with the mushroom. I feel like. <laughs> I think so with that whole theme. Yeah, totally. 
All right, so I'm just gonna let those dry a little bit more. Have any other trivia questions left, Krista? Yeah, I have a few. We can do some just for fun. Okay, in the 1865 novel, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, what happens to Alice when she eats a magical mushroom? A, she becomes older. B, her body size changes. C, she becomes invisible. It's fun to see y'all guessing. Anybody else have a guess? All right, it is B, her body size changes. Very good. I'll give you another one. How about, this is a tougher one. What do the Halloween colors black and orange symbolize? So what do black and orange symbolize in Halloween? That's a tough one. You can guess just one if you, if you want to guess. I would never know this. Mm -hmm. These are good questions, they're tough. Oh, orange, the moon and black night. Well, that's a good guess. Yeah, that's a good guess, I like yeah. that. She put some thought into it. <laughs> Whereas I would have just said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the answer. Um, orange stands for harvest and warmth, which I get, you know, folly. And black signifies death and darkness. Ooh. Mm. Let's go to a happier one. How about, oh, here's a good one. Does anybody have a Swifty on here? Have any Swifties? <laughs> Swift's song Haunted appears on which album? I literally could not even tell you. I that. couldn't either. <laughs> Somebody asked me if I wanted to go see Taylor Swift in New Orleans next October. And I said, uh, I'd have to start listening to the music. I like it, but I don't know enough to know. So they just like, cause she released more dates for 2024 and there's going to be five in Canada, mm -hmm. um, but they are all in Toronto. Oh, <laughs> um, at, uh, well, so that, I mean, I've, I won't get into it, but it's the biggest venue in Canada that can host a concert of hers I that like sell out with like 75,000 people, right? So they'll do um, multiples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's doing five nights at the, well, it's not called the Sky Dome anymore in Toronto, but that's what I'm going to call it. But um, it's called the Rogers Center now and it's where the Blue Jays play and it's got this cool dome of the, of the ceiling of the, of the stadium that can like open up in, um, I mean, it might not open up in the winter, so maybe not, but, um, anyways, apparently there were 20 million people on the wait list to get tickets. Like Canada's population wow. is 40 million, like half the wow. population half the country. is trying to get tickets for this concert. How crazy is that? Yeah. I mean, I, th I would go, it's just hard to plan ahead for October of next year. <laughs> It is. I mean, it definitely looks like it'd be a fun time and, yeah. uh, you know, very catchy, but I, uh, I bet it's a good show. I, I think it is. <laughs> I mean, the 20 million people are trying to get tickets. What I right. think that's really a lot. <laughs> right. Okay. The answer is speak now. Ah, uh, um, Beyonce's in town tonight here in Charlotte. Oh, cool. Mm hmm Yeah, lots of concerts going on. It's concert yeah. season. Yeah, it is. Just because it's so yes, nice. Denise, it's come visit you. Denise is in New Orleans. Oh, cool. That'd be awesome. All right, I'm going to start doing um, the black stripes on the base of um, the mushrooms. I'm going to just kind of eyeball it, I think. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do, though, I'll kind of show you before I paint it. I'm just going to show you on a little piece of paper so you can see. I'm going to use my liner brush to kind of be the thickness of my stripe. So just I'm going to put um, paint on the brush and then I'm just going to apply pressure and push down. And I'm going to make that as like a marker for how thick I want my stripe to be. I'm just going to make it a little bit easier for myself. Um, so I'm going to make these lines and I'm going to start 
where the underside of the mushroom and the base begins. So I'm not gonna paint like on the underside of the mushroom, just the base. So let me grab my sample to show you. So it doesn't go underneath, it just meets, it's kind of like a collar underneath the, the, uh, the underside and the base. So that's where I'm gonna paint these lines. And I'm just gonna use my brush width just kind of as a guide for how thick I want these stripes to be. And you can kind of touch them up because when you put your brush down originally, like it kind of like rounds out the edge. So you can kind of go back and smooth it out. So it's a little bit more square if you want, but um, I'm just going to eyeball it, which I kind of like. Yeah. The stripe one is done. And then I'm just going to move on to the second one. And I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it, but I'm gonna try and leave like the same amount of space between the stripes as like the same thickness between the black stripes as the black stripes. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it's gonna look like the white and the black lines are the same thickness. And I'd probably go back and do more coats of these just because I can see that um, I don't have like a solid coverage. So I can kind of see like some streaky lines on there. I mean, you could totally leave that if you like it, but I might go back and just add a second one because I am applying it rather uh, thick. Um, but just because I watered down my paint a little bit just to help me move this paint around a little bit easier, um, it's just not super opaque. So I'm going to go back and do a second coat. There's my last one on the bottom there. And then I'm gonna move on to the next one. So I chose um, horizontal stripes, but you could do vertical too if you wanted to. I'm gonna stick with the vertical, or sorry, horizontal. I also really like the look of the black stroke and coat stripes beside the um, black velvet foundation on the back of the canister, like the background color. I like the comparison of the two beside each other. Yeah, that is nice. Now I'm curious, who's like, who here, like Halloween is their absolute favorite holiday because i i i'm i'm more of a a christmas gal personally i'm a christmas person we don't have many kids in our neighborhood so we don't get like a lot of trick-or-treaters so that doesn't make it like as exciting um mm -hmm. my mother-in-law lives one neighborhood over from us and she's kind of on like it's the street where kids go because there's bigger houses and they know they're gonna get the good stuff <laughs> oh, um, and she makes us keep a tally and I think last year she had 450 kids wow 450 trick-or-treaters <laughs> Robin says it's her husband's birthday that's fun oh that's fun I know someone else with whose birthday is on Halloween too he's just a little guy but he has lots of fun because now he just thinks birthdays are everyone dresses up and gets candy <laughs> yeah that's right right Robin, do you do anything to celebrate special for your husband's birthday or do you just go all out, all out for Halloween? Or does he like Halloween? Yeah, that'd be funny if he didn't like it. <laughs> Denise loves it. She starts it off. Oh, Denise starts off the holidays for them in New Orleans. Oh, that's really fun. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. So once we have this, the one coat of black on here, should we move over to the faces and then we can do our second coat of black oh, stripe goodness. later? Absolutely, we can do that. Yeah, I just okay. have to do one more coat on the background. So I'll stop that. Good, thank you for, so yeah, right. I, could, 
kept going, but I'll do the third coat on the mushroom tops. And then, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Yeah. And we can get our little faces done. Robin says her husband dresses up scary and they go out to dinner. <laughs> I great. love it. Very That's fun. So fun. What was everyone's favorite Halloween costume growing up? Mm, uh, my mom was, my mom's a seamstress and I very much resonated with princesses. And so I think I was a princess for Halloween, like seven years in a row. And I'm pretty sure I wore those costumes on days other than just Halloween. So I mm -hmm. took that as a serious full-time job, yeah. <laughs> but I'm curious what everyone's favorite, or if you have kids, what their favorite costume is, I'd, be, I'd love to hear. I love hearing different. Oh yeah. That's a good ideas. one. Good question. Good question. I have to put that in the chat if you think of something. My cousin one is a lamp. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> she won as a lamp one year. She found like a lampshade hat and then wore right. like the black kind of bodycon suits and then put a like a white duct tape line down her. That was like the lamp post. <laughs> that's funny. And then yeah. one year she was a pickle. And my other cousin was a burrito but she couldn't like bend her legs. So when she was walking up steps to go trick or treating, she had to like hop up the stairs and it was hilarious. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing? Does anybody have any questions about anything Mako related? Yeah, you'll get the technique sheet for this project with all the colors um, listed on there. So if you don't have a chance to ask Krista a question right now, or you know maybe you think of one as you're using it, you can check out the Mako website, and there's probably some answers there. Or just send yeah, send them a message, and I'm sure they'd be happy to answer. But um, all the products that I've been using tonight are going to be listed on that technique sheet, so you can learn more about them on their website too. Um, and just check out all the other stuff they have if you haven't already. All right, I'm just going to do the orange and then I'll do the faces, but you get the idea. I would continue that around the container. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, my alarm. Um, but I'm just doing three tonight just so that we can be, we're not here all night. <laughs> um, but yeah, this would be really cute. You could do many different characters on here. Um, I'd love to see, you know, um, what you would come up with. Yeah, me too. Share it on, I'll, I'll share the link. Oh, here. Denise says her kids and grandkids like Jack and Sally. Also, there is their witch, Frankenstein, and a ghost. Favorite, favorite costumes. Love it. I love when people make their costumes too. Mm -hmm. Like just, they're so funny. <laughs> okay, so earlier I talked about um, the faces sheet that I had um, that was included in the web or the email that Mako just sent out today uh, with the reminder for tonight. There is a downloadable sheet that you can get um, that's got different face templates. So if you wanted to add different expressions to your mushrooms, if you're kind of not sure where you want to Or you won't get to play anymore. Uh, so on my mushrooms that I've got yeah, here, I have, I have you know, my dad my own, like spooky faces. Um, but if you kind of wanted to go the more cute route or kind of, if you want to make the top look like pumpkins, I've got the jack-o'-lantern faces there as well. Um, so you can have these printed out, um, or just kept on a your computer or something to refer to. Um, the one thing that definitely makes this easier, especially for the eyes is to have, um, Q-tips, cotton swabs available to help you do, um, the eyes, uh, just so you get a better circle. Um, my one tip that I will share for doing circles, like if you're dotting eyes with Q-tips, um, I'm just gonna use the green right now because I have a lot of it in my tray. Um, but I always typically say do two coats if you're doing, um, or just pay attention to how you're applying uh, the, um, the dots with the cotton swabs because what happens is once you load up your uh, cotton swab with, with paint, when you push down, your paint is going to go 
and push away from the middle. So you're going to get, I think you can see that little mm -hmm. kind of bald middle part. Um, so that's where you might want to do a second coat and just press a um, coat there. So that's my that's my uh, my tip for doing eyes with cotton swabs is uh, just um, do two coats just so that you can get that middle part filled in because when you push down initially it will push the extra paint out and you'll have that little kind of gap in the middle. Good tip. So I'm just gonna let those top parts dry. Yeah, and then you just get a more solid color. I mean, you could paint it in with a paintbrush too, but you're just gonna get a more round dot by by using that. So just makes it a little bit easier for yeah, you. I like the dots with the Q-tip, that's a good idea. Or if you have like kids doing it as well, um, that makes it help a little bit yeah. easier too. Or if you're doing a project without a lot of brushes, you know, we've done mm. some projects that are every, you know, everything but a brush. That's a fun way to do things too. Oh, that is fun, I like that. I'm just going to paint the stripes on this one base just while I wait for one of the tops to dry a little bit more and then we'll move on to a face and then we can we can call it a night but you will all have all the tech the, the technique sheets with the instructions to do these yourself. Uh, you can come up with your own faces, you can use the face download or the link there in the email. Um, to use as the guideline for making your own expressions on things, or you can create your own. Uh, if you didn't hear the first time I said, um, those face download like expressions that I found, those were just on Canva, um, but you could look on Google as well. Um, but they're just handy just for a starting point, especially if someone's a little bit nervous because a face is um, a little bit daunting to do, especially the eyes. <laughs> I find they can go from really cute to really creepy really quick. So. Yeah. Uh, it might just be handy to have something to refer to and you can sketch it on with pencil first uh, just so you have an idea of where placement is going to be and then you just use uh, paint to cover it up. Yeah, if anyone has questions for Krista about the products that we've used tonight or something else, yeah, definitely take advantage of that while she's here. She has got a lot of information about Mako products that she knows about. <laughs> and if I don't, I can find out. That's true, too. <laughs> All right, so there are my little stripey mushrooms. which I love. Sorry, it's kind of getting very shadowy right now because it's starting to, sun's starting to set and it's bouncing off the water where I am right now. But you can still see what I'm, what I'm working on. So I think this lavender mushroom is looking the driest. So I'm going to, um, what do you think, Krista? Should I do the same faces as I had on my example, or should I do one from the face download sheet that I have? I think maybe one from the face download sheet. Okay. Make it different that way. Okay. So these ones, some of them are cute because they kind of look like they have like little cheeks on them too, um, with which would be used with that cutie pie curl. So I'm going to go ahead and do one of those. Some of them have like little eyelashes and stuff. Um, I would I would send it and post it in the, um, the the chat, but it doesn't let me do that. Let me see if I can I'm able to share my screen still. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again so everyone can see what I'm talking about if they didn't catch up the first time. So these are the face kind of templates um, that I just found off of Canva that you can use uh, as just a guideline for making faces on things. These are kind of easy, cute looking ones. Um, just to make it a little bit easier and less daunting to add faces to things. And I'm gonna be using um, Q-tips, cotton, cotton swabs to do those details. So um, I can use those to do the dark black part of the eyes. I can also use them to do like those little pink dots as the cheeks. And then I'll just use my fine liner brush to do the smile. And then I can also add those little highlights in the eyes with the white. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just... 
was going to do. And you, if you want, you can sketch it on in pencil first so that you know where you're kind of putting it on, where your placement's going, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> And just be sure again, when you're doing, um, oh, I didn't do mine far apart enough. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm just going for it, like I said. Um, but when you're doing things with the Q-tips, if you're doing dots, just make sure that um, the first dot you do, the paint's gonna push out towards the edge because of the pressure that you're putting down on the Q-tip. So you might wanna just go back and do a second one just in the middle, just to fill it in so that you don't have um, any opaque spots show through once it's been fired. Uh, so there I've got my two eye dots and then I'm going to take another cotton swab and I'm going to do two little cheeks uh, similar to one of these graphics here, kind of underneath the eyes. And because I'm applying it with the cotton swab, like it's pretty thick, um, the amount that I'm applying. So I don't think I need to apply uh, three coats of that. I don't want to apply too much and have it crawl um, once it's been fired. So I'm just going to do one, one little dot because it's pretty concentrated on the end of that cotton swab. Okay, now I'm going to add my little smile. Oh my word, that is so cute. <laughs> So I'm going to let the black on the eyes dry a little bit before I go in and add the white highlights with my uh, my liner brush. But I think my orange uh, mushroom is looking dry enough. So I'm going to go and add an ex a little face on that one quickly. If you'll um, stop sharing your screen, then we'll see your um, hand. Oh, your yes. Hand yes, better. yes. Thank you. Yep. Okay, look at there this little Perfect. Look how cute that is. Very cute. And so easy to do because it's so, so hard to easy. circle, you know, with a brush. I think that's a perfect. Spot. Yes. With a brush, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I just said, I'm going to wait till that dries a little bit. And then I'll go in and add those white highlights with my liner brush uh, just to make it a little bit easier, just so I don't get those colors mixed either. But now I'm going to do my second base. Hmm, I'm doing eyes closed one. So I'm going to use my liner brush for this one. So these eyes kind of look like smiles. So two little smiley lines for the eyes. And then another smiley line for an actual smile. And then I'm going to get that pink cotton swab again and do some little cheeks. And then I'm also going to use that liner brush again and I'm just going to add some little eyelashes. All right, now I'm pretty sure my green one's dry enough as well. So I'll do that one too. And then those three are done. You know, other things you could do, like I love that this is just use stroking coat and uses the matte foundations. You have your little, um, cotton swabs that you're doing. You could also mm -hmm. add texture with, you know, French dimensions or designer liner. Of course, Ooh, yeah. designer liner is meant to be thin, fine lines. Don't do designer liner really heavily or it can flake off. But if right. you want more texture, then French dimensions is perfect. So there's lots of different ways, but like for the little stripes, you could add some little, mm -hmm. little French mm -hmm. dimension or designer liner lines or accents or dots. There's just so many fun things you could add to that. Yeah, that's that's true. And drawing them on or using the designer liner is almost like using a writer bottle. So you might right. get like straighter lines if you do that. That's a smart way to do it too. Nothing different. I'm gonna add a little happy smile to this one with my little liner brush here. And then I'm going to do my cheeks. I think this cheeks just add so much more to it. They're so they cute. really do. They're so cute. <laughs> They're so cute. 
Ooh, I need some more of that though. So that's cutie pie coral that I'm using for the little cheek dots. It's a nice cheery, happy pink. And you know what? I might add eyelashes to these eyes too. Very fun. Well, it's like doing actual makeup. One side always looks better than the other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those are probably a little bit too wet for me to add the white dots to, but um, I'm going to do it just so you can see, but um, I'm not going to mix too much. I'm not going to move my brush around too much because I don't want those colors to mix. Um, but just so you can see how I do it, I'm just going to get some white on my uh, little liner brush and just add cute little white dots to those eyeballs just to add a little bit of sparkle to them very cute there we go there you have it sorry for the shadows i like that those are real happy looking because the ones in the original the original are like more they're a little creepy looking funny. yeah they're creepier yeah. looking yeah they're but that's cute. fun too right because then you can have people doing you know i could mm -hmm. have happy on this side and i could have my creepy on the other side if i want exactly so, um, so versatile you can do whatever you would like on those um, but that is how you can paint your own um, bad dream before Christmas holiday <laughs> <laughs> uh, mushroom canister. The one thing I'll point out to you real quick um, is, again, before I finish and before I put that in the kiln, I would just paint three coats of that matte black on the bottom of these legs. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything is colored or everything's covered um, and sealed. And I'd be able to put that right in the kiln because I've done enough coats of paint that it is all sealed and I wouldn't near clear need clear glaze. Um, I wouldn't want clear glaze on the outside of this anyways, because that is a matte black, so it would not be matte anymore. Um, and then I also wouldn't want to have to deal with cross-contamination of these crystals getting in my glaze tank. So this would just be ready to go, ready to fire and put in the kiln and call it a night. Perfect. I love it. Wonderful. So cute. I mean, it's so important too that we did, I mean, because it takes time to do all the coats, but it's important because we're not putting that clear glaze on there, you know? You have mm -hmm. to have your three coats of your stroke and coat of your foundations or whatever to make sure it's all sealed. So yeah. thank you very much. Does anybody have thank any questions you. before we go? Such a cute project. Well, yeah, I put I, our- Adults and kids, I hope people like it. Yes. I put our Facebook group on here, our Facebook page on here. So um, if you, when you make some things, go share them. We can't wait to see them. Yeah, we can't wait to see it either. All right, y'all. Everybody have a great night and thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Crystal, Bye. for helping me out. Absolutely. Thank you, Lindsay. It was a wonderful class. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Crystal. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.